Hey guys, uh, just doing a video here on the equipment setup of my saltwater aquarium, my saltwater reef aquarium. Uh, just wanted to walk through all the equipment on the tank uh, so people can see what the complete setup looks like from an equipment side. So it's a 45 gallon aquarium. Uh, it is 36 inches wide, 24 inches tall, and 12 inches deep. Uh, on the tank, I have two AI Prime 16 HD reef lights. Uh, just give you a quick shot of the packaging here so you can see exactly what they are. Uh, the packaging has a picture of a white light, minor black. Um, and then I have them spaced uh, 11 inches off the top of the tank and 11 inches in from each side. So that means they are, there is 14 inches in between the two of them. Um, I did that intentionally to decrease the hot spot in the middle to get more uniform um, intensity across the tank and make sure there was no hot spots on the end. So that was uh, intentional. Um, again, more to decrease the hot spots in the middle and make sure I have full coverage uh, on the tank and with the way I have them spaced out I actually have Monty cap growing at the bottom of the tank on the far side so I do get good light dispersion with that setup uh, as far as my power head goes I have a Nero 3 on the tank um, got the packaging here just to show you exactly what it is. I run this at variable speed uh, with the low side being 25%, the high side being 75%, and with the midpoint being at about 50%. Um, so I'm just going to show you it here for a minute. Um, you'll see kind of the different profiles of it. It's a very... Um, flat profile uh, against the tank and um, really does a great job. So I'll just show you here for a minute so you can kind of see it in action. All right, so in addition to the Nero 3, I also have one single standard power head. Um, you can see here, it's kind of pointed off to the side and up. Um, you'll see here in the video, the main thing I use this for is to create that surface movement and um, that surface breaks and make sure I don't get any skim buildup to keep the, the surface of the water uh, moving essentially. So um, that's in addition to the Nero 3. All right, so also on the tank, I have an Eshops Nano Skimmer. Um, it is rated for 10 to 35 gallons. I have it on a 45 gallon tank. I generally undersize skimmers on my tank. Uh, saves a little bit of money. Uh, and really, all I have to do is dump the collection cup a little more frequently and it does just fine. So. Uh, it is under, undersized for the tank, uh, and it also is an in-tank skimmer, as I don't have a sump or refugium. I run a canister filter, which we'll see here in a second. So it's an in-tank uh, nano skimmer on a 45. I'll let it show here for a minute, and then we'll uh, move on to the next piece of equipment.
So I also have, uh, as I mentioned, I have a canister filter on the tank. Um, I am running a, a canister filter set for a tank up to 30 gallons, so it is undersized. This is not typical for me. Typically, I very much oversize the canister filter. Um, so like on my 56, I have Arena 3, which is rated for a 100 gallon tank. On my 75, when I had that up, I had Arena 4, which was rated for 175 gallons. So I do usually double in filter size. I did not on this one just because it has that shallow 12 inch depth and I didn't want a bunch of power deadheading against the front of the tank and creating flow issues. So I did undersize, although I do not recommend this as a standard unless you have some limitation that forces it. I would always recommend that you oversize your canister filter. All right, so I have just a couple more shots of the canister filter here. Um, as you can see, I do point it towards the top of the water. And then, of course, you know, I have a heater in the tank, Enheim, Jaeger, 200 watt heater. Um, this is also oversized for the tank, just personal preference. Um, I always tend to buy a heater that is uh, designed to do more gallons than, than what I'm going to put it in. And I also want to make a note, make sure you keep flow around that heater. You don't want hot and cold spots in your tank. And the best way to eliminate that is to have flow around that heater. If you have a sump or refugium, of course, put it in there. That way it gets uh, good flow from there. If you don't, you're running canister. I have mine by the um, inlet of the canister filter. So where it's pulling water out of the tank. So it, it does have flow all around it. All right, so the last thing that I have on the tank is just a simple temperature readout. Um, this temperature readout, readout is a, just a very simple one that I got off of Amazon. Um, it literally costs like $7. And uh, there's just a little probe that's in the tank, a little temperature readout on the outside so I can keep an eye on it and make sure that we don't have any temperature spikes. But uh, with that heater, I really stay within half a degree. So it's a pretty good heater. Total cost that I spent, $527. I bought the tank, stand, AI Prime Lights, Nero, 3, and Skimmer all in one shot used for $400. Bucks. Um, the tank was up and running. It had uh, all that in it, plus live sand, rock, and some corals. So it was a great deal. I added the filter. I changed out the heater because I didn't like the heater they had. And I added the temperature readout because they didn't have one. So that brought me to a grand total of 527 bucks. So great little deal for a full complete system. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. And of course, give me a like, give me a subscribe. And I will get more content out soon for you guys. And uh, enjoy your day.